Welcome to lesson eight, which is our final video for this unit, unit five. So in here, we're gonna look at multivariable systems of equations. You might have already heard of systems of, of linear equations in two variables, but what if it but what if we increase that amount? What if there were three variables in three equations? Four, five, or even more? Solving systems of equations containing more than two variables, moving to more complicated forms. All right, so again, this is our last lesson of this unit. And the two learning goals for today is to understand the concept of systems of linear equations in three variables and is able to solve simple systems of equations in three variables. Let's do some review first of systems of equations in two variables. What are some ways to solve systems of equations in two variables? Well, we could use the substitution method or adding and subtracting the equations. So this is all based off of the idea to eliminate as much variables as possible so we can solve the linear equation. What is the basic mindset of solving systems of equations? Well, to turn a binary linear equation, substitute or add and subtract, so elimination, into a linear equation in one variable. Again, this is transformational thinking. How can you solve systems of equations involving three variables? Is there anything different? The concept of systems of equations in three variables. Introduction. We have three animals here. We have Garfield, Mickey Mouse, and Bugs Bunny. The ages of all three animals are 26 years. Now, this is not their actual ages. Um, be aware that this is just the random numbers assigned to them. So Bugs Bunny is one year older than Garfield. Two times the age of Bugs Bunny plus the age of Mickey Mouse is 18 years older than Garfield. Please find the ages of each of these animals. Well, interact, and since you probably don't have someone else by your side right now, you could comment down in the description, or you could um, just think about what I'm saying and maybe what you're saying, if you're thinking something different, and then make a conclusion by yourself off of that. Is there an unknown quantity in this question? What equivalent relationships can you identify? Well, we have three different unknown quant quantities, and we're being asked to solve that. So we have the ages of Bugs Bunny, Garfield, and Mickey Mouse. So the unknowns are each of the animals' ages. We can represent each of them with a variable, so we have three variables, x, y, and z. The equivalent values is we know that, this is the first one, each of their ages plus together is 26. Their age sum is 26 years. We know that Bugs Bunny is one year older than Garfield, so Bugs Bunny minus one would be equal to Garfield. And we also know that two times Bunny Bugs plus Mickey Mouse is 18 more than Garfield. So we can use functions and equations to express this. And after substituting them with their corresponding variables, we have three equations. Question number two. From the three equations listed, what do you notice? Well, here we have two variables, but here we each have three variables in each equation. The, this equation, equation number two, has a degree of one and is linear. And equations one and three are linear as well, and they have a degree of one. Equation number two is a binary linear equation. And while equation numbers one and three are ternary linear equations, they're linear equations in three variables. So since the ages of the three animals must satisfy the above three equations at the same time, it, the three equations are combined together. So that makes sense. And we have a system of equations in three variables. All it has is increase one more variable and one more equation. In this system of equations, there are three unknowns. And the exponent of each of the unknowns in each equation is one, with three separate equations. Such a system of equations is called a system of ternary linear equations. Practice. Which of the following is not a system of, equation in of equations in three variables? Think about the different definitions that you, that you would use to identify uh, systems of equations in three variables. You can even use some of the knowledge you know from systems of equations in two variables to help. 
So which of the following is not a system of equations in a theory variable? That would be D, right? Well, here we have x, y, and z, x, y, and z. But in the third equation, we have x times y times z. So now they're one term, not three separate terms, which means that it's a, it's a different type of variable. So you can't have variables multiplied together or, you, or else you get a different type of variable. So for a system of equations in three variables, all of the equations together should contain three variables. It doesn't mean that each equation has to have three separate variables, just saying all together have three different variables. Solving systems of equations in three variables. Similar to, us, to the solution of a system of linear equations in two variables, the common solution of each equation in a system of linear equations in three variables, well, that's such a tongue twister, is called the solution to the system of linear equations in, two, in three variables. So that makes sense. Um, so a group of three values that satisfy all three equations in a system of equations in three variables. So how can you solve this? Use your thinking and your mindset from solving systems of equations in two variables to help. Well, can you still use a process of elimination? Can you eliminate variables to convert three variables to two and then from two to one? You still can. So let's solve this together. We have three equations, x plus y plus z is equal to 23, x minus y is equal to one, two x plus y minus z is equal to 20. We can first, uh, so we're, the goal is to eliminate three variables from three to one. First, we convert equation number two into x is equal to y plus one, and we call this new equation equation number four. We substitute equation number four into equations one and three, and then we obtain the equations five and six. Two y plus z is equal to 22, three i minus z is equal to 18. Solve equations five and six, we have y is equal to eight, z is equal to six. Substitute this value, these values again into another equation, we have x is equal to nine. So therefore, our solution would be x is equal to 9, y is equal to 8, z is equal to 6. So as you can see, the solution isn't much different, except that there's just many more repetitive uh, steps because there are more, more variables. So yes, the overall challenge that has increased here, I wouldn't say is actual solving. I think it's just being organized and knowing what you're doing. Um, yeah, so that's why, for example, making it in this format, all your solutions in this format, is very important. So you know, okay, so we first do this, second we do this, and then these are the two equations we get, and then this is our third step, two values we get, fourth step, fifth step. So you really know what you're doing if you're using this proper organized format. Oh, and also be sure to um, label your equations and solve equations five and six, you know, convert two into four, all of that. So that's just gonna, that lingo will help you uh, better understand what you're doing. Conclusion, the basic steps to solving a system of ternary linear equations is to use substitution or addition and subtraction to eliminate variables, take three variables and then turn it into one variable and then solve that for the linear equation in one variable. So from turning linear equations to binary linear equations to linear equation in one variable, eliminate, eliminate. Let's do another example. In equation y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, when x is equal to negative one, y is equal to zero. When x is equal to two, y is equal to three. When x is equal to five, y is equal to 60. Find the value of a, b, and c. So from the problem, you have the following three equations. You know that if, so basically now you're just substituting these values in. You know that if x is equal to negative one, so after you simplify that, it would be a minus b plus c is equal to zero because y would be equal to zero. And then for the second one, you substituted x as two. So then put that in and then you have that's equal to three. And then finally, if x is equal to 5, put that in, and then you have s equal to 60. So replacing y with 60, right? And then solve. So subtract equations. You have a plus b is equal to 1. That's equation number 4. Equation number 5 is 4a plus b is equal to 10. 
And then solve the system of equations involving four and five. So this is a new system of equations you get from co combining equations four and five. So a is equal to three, b is equal to negative two. Substitute this again into equation number one, we get six, c is equal to, seven, to ne negative five. So therefore, a is equal to three, b is equal to negative two, and c is equal to negative five. Applying systems of equations in three variables. So now that you've learned all about the definition of systems of equations in three variables, you've had some experience solving problems with them. Now let's apply that knowledge one more step further to solve word problems. Example three, the nutritional standards for young children require that the daily nutrient required by each child should contain 35 units of iron, 70 units of calcium, and 35 units of vitamins. A group of nutritionists has prepared meals for kindergarten children according to the stand above standards, which contain the three kinds of food, A, B, and C. The following table gives the amount of iron, calcium, and vitamins containing each serving, 50 grams of foods A, B, C, respectively. So here it's asking you, here you're being asked, um, you're being asked, what should, you know what, I'd rather just say it. So what should, each meal contains. So how much how much servings of each kind of food should one meal have to meet the standards just right? Okay, so the analysis. If each of the three foods A, B, and C in the recipe is given X, Y, and Z portions, please list the equations so that the nutrients contained in the three foods A, B, and C just meet the requirements in the child nutrition standard. And so then solve the Turner linear equation system, and then find the number of A, B, and C shares that satisfy the that satisfy the requirements. Again, use this type of chart to help you keep track of the values, so you don't get confused. Well, first we set the variables in the equation, so we have three equations listed, and then it's just solving. So this solving process, I won't. I won't talk, I won't, uh, you know, like, walk you through, just pause the video at the end of this so you understand. All right, so this shouldn't be that hard to understand, right? So the answer is this recipe contains two servings of food A, one serving of food B, and two servings of food C to meet the nutritional standard. Class summary. Systems of equations and three variables. We'll learn about the concept. And we also tried solving. So again, systems of equations in three variables aren't that different from systems of equations in two variables. And the main goal of this lesson is just to sort of tell you that once you really know how to solve a system of equations at, in any sort of variables, you can easily solve other systems of equations in different variables because they're all using the same methods, the same mindset of in thinking, it's just that they might require more repetitive steps. So long as you're organized and you know what you're doing, you should be fine. The two skills we learned today is to understand the concept of systems of linear equations and three variables, and is able to solve simple systems of equations and three variables. Thank you so much for watching Three Inquisitive Kids, and be sure to subscribe so when we start posting the next videos for Unit 6, you'll be notified and ready. So again, thank you for watching and see you next time.